Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking bourbon. All right, Ben, nothing on the bar, nothing up my sleeve. What's happening here? All right, so got a little experimental video Ooh. for today. It is Thanksgiving, and it so is. the question, you know, there's the question like, do we do the cliche wild turkey video for Thanksgiving? And the answer is yes, absolutely. But I've had this little experiment that I've wanted to do for a while, that okay. I've been working on for a while. Yeah. So I have, bam, bam, a decanter of bourbon filled with Bam! Wild turkey. So this is the 81 proof wild turkey. Yep. And actually, I didn't do this with wild turkey specifically for Thanksgiving. Um, I wanted to get a decanter and, you did. and see how it affected the oh, bourbon. See if, you know, gotcha. having decanting yep. your whiskey. Because I've looked up stuff online about, you know, decanters and how it affects it. And it's one of those things that's clear as mud. Everybody has their opinion. Yes, it does. And no, it doesn't. So, yes, yeah, so I bought this cheap decanter for like 10 bucks. <laughs> But it looks pretty cool. It does. And so I want to throw something in there that is a decent bourbon, but not expensive, just in case it did completely ruin it. So this needs to be right here, right above the like button. Oh, yeah, there you go. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> We're trying to do YouTube the whole YouTube speak. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this has been in here for about three and a half weeks, and I've specifically not been messing with it. So now I want to do a side-by-side and see if the decanted bourbon tastes different than the stuff that's just been in the bottle. And this is, you know, it's, running a little too, but it's only been a, a couple weeks that it's been at that level, so. Yeah, it was like a month ago we did a review of this versus the 101. Mm -hmm. We really liked it. It was kind of, it was actually the first time we'd ever had the 81. Yeah. We jumped right to Wild Turkey 101 and kind of stuck with it, but it skipped the 81, so. And so a little thing about decanters real quick. Okay, so, yeah. I was looking at them, and the one thing, I do have one here that I got. This is a Jim Beam single barrel one. It came in like one of those gift packs with sure. yeah. the bottle. And this one... That like, doesn't seem to be sealed. Yeah, it's just smooth glass on smooth glass that doesn't... So I wasn't going to use that. So Jim Beam's whiskey game is strong, but their decanter game is weak. This one's at least a topper that stays put. It is glass on glass but it's like oh. a textured glass, so it kind of holds it into place Frosted. and creates some sort of a seal. Um, there is a tiny bit of condensation in the decanter. I would agree. Not much, and I do get that sometimes on bottles as well, yep. even if the cork isn't particularly bad. Yep. So let's find out here and see if this makes a big difference because you, know, you may want to keep a decanter on hand if you just want to throw some cheap whiskey in there but look like a baller, you know? bust that out on cigar night with your buddies, tell them it's that's, something expensive. That's right. Or if you've got a whiskey snob in your life that only likes to drink the expensive stuff, you put something cheap in there. That's right. And then when they start talking about how much they love it, yeah, like the end right. of Scooby-Doo where you pull the mask off, it's like, it's been wild turkey all along. <laughs> so. It's absolutely hilarious. And you know what? Every single person watching this video knows that reference. Absolutely. I think we'll have some of those too. Oh yeah, I suppose you should have a pour of that as well. <laughs> So again, I haven't really touched this, I don't think in three and a half weeks, I think it's been. Okay. I maybe had one pour out of it, Oh. but that was probably right at the beginning. So it's definitely been a couple weeks in there Okay. with uh, no manipulation at all. So kind of interesting here. Now, I don't know if this varies from bourbon to bourbon or whiskey to whiskey, whether or not a decanter affects it. I, I honestly don't know. I have decanted wine, but drink it later that night. And it definitely helps in that situation. Aerated a little bit, is that but, what yeah, wine exactly. benefits yep. from that? But I have never decanted uh, whiskey. I think for my purposes and having a decanter, to be honest, I want to just have a, a bourbon mm -hmm. in another room where I don't have to come down to the basement to grab mm -hmm. a bottle every time. Sure. And so it's probably, I'll, I'll maybe not fill the entire thing to the brim, but just put enough in there to, yeah. to have on hand. Do you think you play the what's in this bottle game with yourself? Like, what did I put in there last? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on when I put it in there. <laughs> You know, if we had a night of whiskey drinking and cigar smoking, and maybe a little foggy at which one I put in there. And, that's right. And then it's like a blind. I'm not noticing a ton of difference on the nose nope. here. Neither am I. So far, so good. You know what we should have done is the scientific method I learned on another channel, the Bourbon Junkies. They know um, nothing. 
If, <laughs> if you're watching us and for some odd reason you don't know who they are, check out their channel. It's yeah, great. Good channel. Uh, but what they had done in one of their blinds is they did, um, I believe it was the new Old Forester 1920 versus the old one. And so um, they came up with the idea of pouring two of one and then one of the other with the idea that if you really can tell them apart, you should be able to pick the two versus the one. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? They're just trying to drink more whiskey. That's all that is. That could be too. And cheers to them for that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, geez, I just spilled that. Oh man, that's all right. I'm going in for the taster. I'm not gonna do Johnny the... Drum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go in for the decanter first here. Oh, that's a good idea. Nice wild turkey goodness. It is the 81, which, you know, if, I, if I'm gonna drink wild turkey at the less expensive yeah. level. I'm, I'm gonna go 101 every time Probably. I think, but still, this yep. is. I'm really getting a particular note tonight out of the wild turkey that I don't remember. Like a grainy, grassy note. I mean, I'm really noticing the rye, I think. It could be the lower proof. Yeah, and, the, and maybe the proof doesn't like help it. And we don't know the age. I think they promise. Five years, at least I think. five years, but. All right, I'm gonna try the actual bottled one. Oh wow, that's totally not okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm really noticing much of a difference. No difference. Yeah. I mean, if you set these down and said they're they're the same bourbon, tell me the difference between you know what. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to. Mm -mm. I'm really getting the rye forward spice. It's a good bourbon if you if you've not tried the. Wild Turkey uh, 81, but it's interesting because it doesn't have the proof to back it up. It feels like it's missing something, only because I've, I've had other Wild Turkeys maybe. More. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing, like Greg said before, we actually bought this bottle just because we realized we never yeah. bothered buying one because we always just yeah. did 101 or above. I'm wondering if this is a psychological thing, but maybe if anything, the the decanted one is maybe a little flatter, but I think if you mix these up, I don't think I would be able to pick which one was which. Nah, maybe not. Yeah, I'm not noticing enough of a difference here to really... Like if I really, really try to talk myself into it, maybe I can talk, like, pretend, but I don't think if I walked away and you mixed up the glasses... Yeah, you wouldn't be able to tell which one was I which. I really don't think I could. Well, good. I'm glad to have that question answered because now I'll, you know, yeah. pour some, you know, Rip Van Winkle in there and, and have well, that. Hopefully. <laughs> no, because I, I just didn't want to pour anything, you know. And then have it, like, go bad. Yeah, exactly. And not that I'm going to be pouring anything expensive but the or rare reality, into this anyway. The reality, I mean, if you're going to do it and drink it three weeks, six weeks, maybe, I think you're fine. Long term, you have increased the amount of surface area and oxygen. In your yeah, bottle. yeah. I wouldn't even probably do six weeks, but again, anytime I use this, it's for the purpose of having it in another room in the house with yep. a couple of glasses, yep. where it's just kind of right there, and you don't have to go down a couple flights of stairs to what, get. What he's implying is next to the bathtub. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Actually, I have a large bathtub with a flat screen on the wall. Not bragging. I'm just telling you why I why I have whiskey in my in my bedroom. <laughs> So, like sometimes when I want to, you know, hop in the bath and and watch some TV or what, I feel like I'm gonna get shredded for this. And no, that's the, totally okay. Every, I think our channel's young enough where we don't have quite enough subscribers right now, and hopefully people oh, everyone's like on board with it. Yeah, yeah go back and they don't trash. Yeah, I, I like taking baths and drinking whiskey. I don't <laughs> no. care what you people think. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I keep a little bit of this, about that much, yeah. maybe a little bit more in my room with a couple of glasses, and then that way if I decide, you know what, shoulders are hurting a little bit, <laughs> gonna go watch a TV show or a football game in the tub, Nothing I've got that. something right there and I don't have to, and it's a couple stories up, so it's, it's anyway, that's not the point of this video. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I think, you know, I don't know how it would fare up. You know what I should have done is put some in this one too and just see how this terrible, yeah, The world know, may have come to end. That's his beam on the, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so the other thing is, is if you get a decanter like this and you're really worried about it, you could probably buy a stopper for it. Like, you know, they make those store-bought wine stoppers would probably fit in there if you really wanted to seal it, you know? Well, maybe not. That's a little bit. I bet it would. I mean, there's plenty of corks that would fit. 
Yeah, I bet you have several that would work in there. Yeah, so you could always do that, but yeah, yeah. no, didn't really notice a difference. But anyway, this is, you know, so we're waiting to do this experiment anyway, and it's like, well, hey, it's wild turkey in there. Might as well do that for the Thanksgiving wild thing. Wild turkey, so, happy yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, drink, drink some wild turkey today on Thanksgiving. Um, you know, maybe if the if if you get the the notion in your head, pour a couple of cast strength bangers, bring up politics at the table. That's and just really that's, that's what, what Thanksgiving is right? all about. Yeah. Politics and religion. Yeah, politics and religion. And after about three or four high proof bourbons. And if it's from Tennessee, it's still a bourbon. Well, <laughs> You'd be better suited talking about <laughs> politics and religion depending on, on your company. But yeah, you know. So anyway, well, this has been our little decanter experiment with some wild turkey. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Cheers.